Well, a new Wall Street Journal NBC poll reveals that Americans are divided over the wisdom of the $85 billion in cuts. Neil King joins us with more from Washington. Neil, thanks for joining us this morning. Chelsea, good morning. So we're just two days away from these sequester cuts kicking in. Any chance left for a deal to avoid them? <laughs> no, I don't think there's any chance of that. I mean, we may possibly see some sort of deal down the road in the weeks to come that would modify all this, but there's certainly nothing that's going to happen between now and Friday to alter this. All right, so looking at the new poll we just mentioned between the Wall Street Journal and NBC, where is the divide among Americans on this issue? Well, the interesting thing, I mean, a majority of people, 54 percent or something, think the sequester is a bad idea outright. Um, only about a quarter, sorry, about a fifth think it's a good idea. But what's interesting about it is a lot of the people who think it's a bad idea, like uh, well over half of all Republicans think the sequester is a bad idea, but a similar number think that it should be replaced by something that cuts more, just done in a different way. So there's a lot of division about, it's sort of like Obamacare, where you saw people that opposed Obamacare because they wanted something more than Obamacare. They wanted you know, it done differently. In this case, there's a lot of apprehension about the way the sequester is going to happen but you see very different feelings when it comes to just do we need to cut spending. And how do Americans feel about the process that is going on right now in terms of uh, trying to reach a deal here? Is there one side they blame more than the other? Yeah, overwhelmingly. I mean, this is a poll that casts a pretty gloomy light on the Republican Party. I mean, we ask people kind of generically, do you agree or disagree from what you know with what you know the Republicans, Democrats, or Obama are trying to do now without specifying what that is. 57% of people said they disagreed with what the Republicans are trying to do. We've asked that question going back to the mid 90s. That was the highest number we've ever seen. So there's a desire uh, for there to be some sort of compromise with the heaviest onus being put on the Republican side. But still, uh, we did see now those results. Obama still taking a little bit of heat for the economy. Um, what did you find there? How, what do people think about the economy and the president's handling of the situation? Well, I mean, Obama enters the second term uh, about where George W. Bush was at, at that same time, uh, not nearly as good as where Bill Clinton was in 1997. His approval rating is now about 50 percent. Things have kind of fallen off since the election, and there's a lot of apprehension about, obviously, the direction of the country and his overall handling of the economy, which has slipped a bit in the last couple of months. I mean, it's certainly the case that the sequester fight and how this may play out in the next couple of weeks is not going to leave him totally untainted. Um, and his position on a lot of fronts is strong, but it's not, you know, stellar. But actually some of the issues that he's championing uh, did find support among those that were polled, right? Yeah, I mean, the thing that's extraordinary, actually, when you look at the main things that he wants to push forward on this year, you know, raising the minimum wage, stricter gun controls, immigration, et cetera, all those things uh, had very big support uh, in this poll, almost all of them over 60 percent. So in that way, he has a real tailwind. And it's clear that the Republicans, as they push back against a number of these things, uh, are going to also be pushing back against public opinion. And Neil, when we look ahead on the political landscape, obviously the uh, elections coming up in 2014, if Obama's approval ratings continue to eat, eat, inch down and, you know, we keep getting to these sort of, uh, you know, brinks of, of disaster and then p pulling back a little bit, uh, you know, how does that affect the elections going forward? Could the coattails that uh, perhaps some of Democrats are hoping to ride for, uh, with the president's success of, of winning a second term start to wane? Yeah, I mean, that's true. Midterm elections generally aren't that great on the party that holds the White House. Um, but on the other hand, I mean, it's so clear that the narrative right now really is the Republican Party trying to rebuild its brand after last November. And so many of these um, poll findings on, on a number of these issues, gun control, immigration, et cetera, show just a difficult environment for the Republican Party overall. And I think, you know, in the election next year, we're looking pretty far down the road. Uh, but it's going to be more sort of, I think, holding up the two parties' visions more than it is necessarily just assessing how the president himself is doing. I mean, we're talking primarily, of course, about House races and a certain number of Senate races. All right. Okay, Neil, thanks so much for joining us this morning from Washington. We appreciate it.